All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Ask Me Monday. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. My name is Derek from Simnet Nutrition. And as you guys know, Ask Me Mondays are a series of videos I do every Monday to answer some commonly asked questions and some not so commonly asked questions from you guys in the comment section down below. So as usual, I'm out here amongst the trees in nature answering these questions for you guys, getting some much needed vitamin N and some fresh air. It always feels so good to get outside. If you guys are thinking about getting outside today, honestly, do it. Even for five minutes, for 10 minutes, just get out, take a few deep breaths. It'll be so worth it. It'll set your whole week up right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that opening montage with some of those drone shots in there. So fun having that thing. It is really cool, but I am so nervous to fly it. Like I was like shaking flying it up here because it's kind of weird. Like you're just flying it like way over top of trees. I just love showing you guys little snippets of where I live and the beautiful landscape that surrounds me. Like look at this, that little trail going down there, all the moss, the trees, can't even see through it, so cool. And then of course the view. So I know I say it every week, but the Ask Me Mondays have been getting too long. It is out of hand. You guys don't have that much time to listen to it. I don't have that much time to answer these questions and to put them together. Like, let's speed this thing up. I'm gonna try and make it more concise this week. And then hopefully I have more time to put into a video for midweek and then I can do kind of like Monday, maybe Wednesday-ish, and then Saturday uploads. So we get three uploads instead of two, but Ask Me Mondays might be a bit shorter. I think that's a good trade-off. All right, let's get right into these questions. The first question comes from Felix Abrecht. Good stuff, a question I had for you quite some time now. How do you keep track of your training progress if you don't count your reps? Cheers. All right, so when I first started calisthenics and exercising and stuff, a big thing of mine was like that I didn't count my reps. I just went to failure. And I think with calisthenics, it can work well because a lot of the movements you're doing bilaterally. So like with a pull up, you're not just pulling one arm down, you're using both arms to pull. When you are, um, doing push-ups for instance you're pushing pushing with both arms away so you're not going to be doing you know seven or ten or something with one arm and then only do like two with the other arm if you're not counting you're just going to go to failure you're working both arms about the same but when you start getting into unilateral things like doing you know maybe one arm chin-ups or one arm push-ups or you're just doing you know bicep curls or something like that one-legged squats you're going to want to count your reps so that you make sure that you do the same on each side so how do you track your progress if you're not counting your reps. So it's not that I don't ever or didn't ever count my reps. I just don't count them every set, every exercise, every workout. Occasionally I would count them as like a baseline just to see where I'm at, to see how many push-ups I could do in a row or how many pull-ups I could do in a row, but my best would change from day to day. So I didn't put too much weight into that. I just knew that if I consistently trained until failure or near failure, and I did that consistently, you know, three, four, five days a week, that eventually I would progress no matter what. The nice thing with calisthenics though is that you can track your progression with the different movements that you could do. So if I did, you know, front lever pulls for a long time and then I was able to go into like a front lever for three seconds or five seconds where I've never been able to do it before, I would know that that's progress, right? I wouldn't have to count numbers in order to see that. So that's uh, one way that you could track your progress. Another way that I track my progress is by looking at my physique and checking myself out and doing a little physique check. And if I am continuing to get stronger, leaner, more muscular, then I know that I'm making progress. So don't get me wrong, I don't think that counting your reps is a bad thing at all. For me, it was just tedious and I knew that if I exerted myself really hard, went to failure or near failure almost every time, and I worked out consistently, that I knew I would make progress doing that. So when I say I go to failure, I'm talking about going until your form starts to fail, not until you're absolutely like falling apart, just just wrecking your nervous system. No, that's not it at all. It's like once your form starts to break, that's when I stop. So I hope that answers your question, Felix. Let's get on to the next question. Emily Lydia, I have a question regarding intermittent fasting. Does taking BCAAs count as breaking your fast? So we know that BCAAs are amino acids. We know that amino acids are part of protein. We know that protein contains calories the same as the other macronutrients do, carbs and fat. They all contain calories. So yes, technically BCAAs will break your fast. And what's interesting is that the amino acids that are in BCAAs, particularly leucine, is especially in insulogenic, insulinogenic, insulinogenic, especially potent at stimulating your body to release insulin. 
So if you ask like the most hardcore fasters if it breaks your fast, yes it does. In my opinion, it's not enough to really sabotage the effects that most of us are trying to get from fasting. But yeah, I think it did. So one of the effects that insulin has on our body is to tell our liver cells, muscle cells to actually take up glucose and to stop using fat as an energy source. So this is one of the reasons why uh, uh, you know that it'll sort of take us out of that fasted state because we're no longer using ketones for energy We're now using like the sugar that our bodies has like freed up But I don't think that it's going to be enough to really affect a whole lot uh, At least for most of us if we're like super finely tuned athletes or extremely Experienced fasters then we might notice something but I think for most people taking BCAAs when you're fasted before your workout probably isn't going to you know harm anything by breaking your fast like that tiny little bit and in fact you have to think about what we're trying to do when we're taking BCAs is we're trying to prevent muscle wasting so it's kind of like a bit of a catch-22 it's like you might prevent some muscle wasting but you might also take your body out of that completely fasted state but I think for the most part I don't think it's anything to really worry about if you want to keep consuming BCAAs when you're fasted before your workout I say go ahead do it so this is actually like my favorite part of this mountain you guys can see like the trail comes down here and then these outcropping of rocks are actually not attached to this main rock you can see down there there's like a big uh, cavern which I actually have a YouTube video where I went and explored that somewhere in the archives I'll try and link it at the very end if you guys want to watch that it's actually a really good video but uh, let's jump over here and answer some more questions it's so cool up here look at this guys It's, I love it. It's like just so like rugged. Oh, and the sun's coming out. Wooey! All right. I'm actually going to put the camera down right here and answer a question. So this question comes from AG14. Hey Derek, my question. Is it true that we shouldn't drink when having a meal? There's been lots of questions on like gas and bloating and other digestive concerns. So if you guys do want me to do a video where I target more just on that topic let me know in the comments down below but this one drinking while eating so I decided to refer back to one of my trusty school textbooks uh, that I liked just to see what it said because there's you know so much information online some of it you can trust some of it you can't and I wanted to hear what it said about it because I know what my opinions are and it basically just confirmed what my opinion and my thoughts were on it liquids and eating many of us drink liquids with our meals this is not really a good practice because extra fluids can dilute loot the digestive juices making it more difficult to break down food drinking water before or after meals is much better a small amount less than one cup of water with meals may help dissolve the food and stimulate digestive juices so there you have it it's in a textbook so it's got to be true <laughs> having some water during your meals is okay a cup or less is fine but having any more than that will actually dilute your stomach acids and make digestion worse so just have a little bit of water with your meals should be all good all right, let's go a little further down here. So this is fun. I always like to check out this little cave when I'm here. It's not quite a cave because you can see through the top there, but it's pretty neat. I love, I love that one big rock that just kind of like stuck in the middle there. It's like a bridge. All right, so the next question comes from Justin Abraham. Derek, so much great content. Thanks, Justin. I try. Question about nutrients in oats. There's some controversy between raw and soaked versus cooked oats. Do you know which is best for the body with regards to nutrient absorption and digestion? Thanks. Well, thank you, Justin, for the compliment and the good question. So whenever you see oats that have been pressed, most of the time, unless they specify that they're raw, they've been cooked. So when you see, you know, like quick oats or what's the other one? Rolled oats, anything like that, they have been cooked and steamed and pressed to get them to that point. So even if you just soak them and do like overnight oats, 
they're still cooked because they've been cooked before even though you're not cooking them. So I think there probably are some companies that do raw oats and I'm guessing that they'd be more in the form of like cracked oats or um, steel cut oats. Yeah, and those might be raw, but I know that oats are quite high in phytic acid, and as we learned in a couple Ask Me Mondays ago, phytic acid is really, really well reduced when we cook food uh, that contains a lot of phytic acid. So I would say that cooking oatmeal is probably the best way to eat it rather than eating it raw. If you guys have a different opinion on this or you know anything different, definitely let me know in the comments down below, but that is what I know on oats and eating it raw. You're probably not eating it raw, even if you think you are. <laughs> Chris Homer, vegan athlete, asks, Hey Derek, here's a question for you. Do you get or have you had many haters since starting your YouTube channel? How do you deal with it and what are your thoughts? I think that guy's a hater with his loud motorcycle. Oh yeah, that's loud. Okay. So I think a lot of us that have found ourselves in this plant-based lifestyle or vegan lifestyle are quite empathetic, are quite sensitive, and I am no exception to that. I am definitely sensitive and empathetic, and growing up, I had a really thin skin. I took stuff very personally. I took offense to a lot of things. So when I started this YouTube channel, I knew that I was putting myself out there for criticism, and I was a bit worried about it. But I really don't get a lot of hate. I really think the saying, your vibe attracts your tribe, is really true in this case. If you look through the comments, it's surprisingly supportive. If you look through our Facebook group, Simnet Nutrition Facebook group for everyone that's bought my ebook, thank you again so much for that. Uh, you'll see that everyone is just helping everyone else out, whether they're vegan or they're plant based or just transitioning to the lifestyle or not at all. Everyone's really helpful and extremely compassionate, and I think that's because I have attracted these people into this community. So I'm really lucky that I don't get much hate, but I do look for criticisms in my comments though, because that's what helps me grow. If people say, you know, even if they're not saying it nicely, if they're like, yo, your music is too effing loud, or you're super annoying, you're way too excited in your videos, or like you don't have enough energy, that's the sort of stuff that I look for because I want to improve, and those are the comments that help me improve. But as far as hate goes, no, I don't get much of it, and you know what, I'm not scared of it at all. I was really worried that people were gonna make like videos about me, like hate videos about SimNet Nutrition, and that sort of thing, and it hasn't happened. All those are mainly just just fears. Actually, that brings up a quick funny story. I'll tell you guys now because I know it's been taken down, but a little while ago, there was a video that was made on me and it was a transvestigation and the person who made it was trying to say that like I was a transvestite pushing this vegan agenda that was like, I don't know, supported by some higher power and I was just like some robot like spewing the lines that were given to me. I don't have any problems with people being transgendered at all. I'm definitely not. I was born a male and <laughs> I'm still a male. But that video was really funny and uh, you know, I thought when something like that came around that I would be hurt because it was like a 10 or 12 minute video going over like pictures and stuff of me talking about how you know, I was once a woman and now I'm a man and this facial hair is just from hormone therapy and all this crap, but it's like, it's so far from the truth that it didn't bother me and it was actually like quite laughable. So yeah, once you start getting haters, you know you've made it. Once you get a transvestigation video made about you, you know that you have made it. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this week's Ask Me Monday. I hope it was a bit more concise than past week's. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely let me know in the comments down below. Give me your questions for next week's Ask Me Monday in the comments down below. Maybe I'll try and get Crystal out for one. So if you guys have questions for Crystal, leave them in the comments and we'll try and get her out for the next Ask Me Monday. I love you guys so much. Thank you all so much for the support, the questions, everything. If you've liked this video, hit the like. It helps the video get seen by more people. It helps my channel grow. It helps us to spread the message. Definitely subscribe if you guys want to see more from me. Here's some other videos I would love for you guys to check out and I will see you guys in a few days with another video.